When it comes to paying for college, the goal is to stack every opportunity so ultimately when we graduate from college, we can have a debt-free degree. And today's guest is going to help us with that stacking process through CLEP testing. Jeannie Barron is the Director of Outreach and Account Management for the College Level Examination Program. She partners with educational professionals to impact student success through CLEP. And she's going to take a deep dive into the CLEP and break it down for us so we understand how to utilize this to pay for school. She earned her master's degree in counseling from the University of Wisconsin and a Juris Doctor degree from William Mitchell College. Listen, Jeannie loves when people ask her, what's CLEP? So let's find out. You're listening to the Scholar Budget Podcast where we teach you how to earn a debt-free degree, grow your money, and claim every opportunity with your name on it. I'm your host, Raquel Bartoli. Let's jump right in. Hello, Jeannie. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yes, we are so excited because I know you have so much good information to share with our scholars and educators and parents. And the most exciting part is I know that after students are done listening to this specific episode, they're literally going to take action. So let's jump in. Jeannie, can you tell us what exactly is the CLEP exam for those listeners who have no clue? Right. That's a great starting question. I get asked that a lot. So the CLEP exam is an acronym. CLEP is an acronym that stands for the College Level Examination Program. So we are um, created and work with college boards. So many students might be familiar with advanced placement or AP courses, which is a course, an exam at the end. CLEP is just the exam at the end. So students can prepare however they would for an exam. We have 34 different subjects. Um, and then it's taking that credit by exam where the students can prove that they have mastery of college level material. Mm. So it's, it's similar to the AP test, right? Similar, but okay. there's no curriculum attached to it. So it's really Perfect. getting credit based for what you already know or what you've taught yourself. Wonderful. So can you kind of take us through the process? So let's say I'm a student and I decide to take the the CLEP exam, what does that process look like from like registration to the end of the test and receiving your scores? Yeah, that all right. That's a great process to go through. So I think first of all is just um, asking yourself what subjects am I interested in to learning about preparing for? Because again, these are rigorous exams. Um, a student's going to earn three to six to 12 college credits, depending on the subject. Wow. So the first question is to what do I have an interest in to self teach self study? Um, secondly, then do your preparation and when a student feels ready, a beautiful thing about CLEP is it's, we call it administered 24 seven, meaning there's no preset exam dates. You can take it whenever you're ready, ready. Wow. Um, so a student would go to a college board account. If they don't have one, you'd create a college board account, um, in there just at, you know, answer the basic demographic questions, select your exam. Payment is due at the time that you register for your exam. So then you're registered with um, College Board, but then you have to schedule the test session itself. Okay. So we have about 2,000 test centers across the country. Um, most of them are at community colleges and universities. Um, high schools oftentimes open up their own CLEP test centers as well. Our military bases, those are generally closed off to those who, um, the people living on the military installation. And then we also have a remote proctoring option. So for students who have the right equipment, they can also test from home. So oh, wow. the second part is scheduling that exam, um, whether, however it is best suits your needs. Um, once that exam is scheduled, CLEP exam is delivered digitally. So they're on a computer. Um, they take 90 minutes, multiple choice exams. Okay. Um, so a student would complete the exam upon completion of the test. Um, you'll be asked, would you like to see your score? And that's the beauty of being delivered digitally um, because the computer does all that. And so the students get their score results right away. And they love wow. that. There's no waiting that. weeks yeah. <laughs> to see how like you did. instant feedback. It is. We do have two exams um, that higher education institutions who accept this credit um, wanted some writing production pieces. So Spanish with writing is one of those and college composition. Again, those are done on a computer too. So if a student 
selects one of those exams to take. You'll do that writing portion on the computer, hit submit. That, that piece gets sent out to be scored by the respective faculty committee members, added to the multiple choice score, and that would take about two weeks to get those scores. But okay, for all the other 32 exams, yeah, you'll get your scores right away. Um, prior to taking the exam, if you know, if you're enrolled in college, if you're a college university student and you want that institution to receive your score, you can send that. If you're a high school student and you don't know where you want to go to college or university yet, um, you'll be able to send two free scores prior to exam day. Okay. Um, if you change your path, we know how sometimes that happens on your educational journey, you will have access to your club scores for 10 years. So they'll be in your college board account. So if um, the tide shifts and you end up enrolling somewhere else, you'll still be able to access those club scores. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of flexibility. So whether I'm logging in and taking it, going to my high school campus if they offer it, or at the college, there's there's a lot of opportunities. I want I want our listeners to know that, um, which is awesome. And and so Jeannie, what would you say are like the pros and cons for the CLEP exam? Well, this isn't me saying this, but we survey our students upon completion of their test. We have them do a quick survey, um, and what they say. No surprise, the number one reasons of what they our learners think are the benefits is the saving of time. Mm. And it could be time to degree. So when you think of entering college, if you had a few college credits in your back pocket, that could just help you stay on time for graduation. But it also can reduce your seat time. You know, in a given semester, instead of having to take a full load, 15 credits to get done in those four semesters for your associate or eight semesters for your bachelor's, you could take a breath and maybe take only 12 credits and still have that on time graduation. Um, so it's seat time though within that semester too. You know, lots of us, you know, we have to work and balance families and other commitments. So being able to have some breath during a semester where you don't right. have to take five college courses because you need to complete, you know, in X amount of time. Um, so I think that's one of the benefits. And then it's, again, financial. Mm -hmm. So students say, you know, saving time and then saving money. You know, the cost of a club exam is $93. And um, when you compare that to the cost of a one college or university course with textbook fees, even one exam is can be a huge savings for students and families. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. that's that's the purpose <laughs> of why we're here today, right? Because we're trying to help students realize that there's so many ways to earn a degree without going into a ton of debt. So, so Thank you for sharing that, um, those pros. And what, what what have students said are like the cons? You know, I don't hear many cons, um, to be honest with you. Um, sometimes students might have a fear. So let's say I'm in high school and I, I'm just gonna use one of our exams we have as an introductory psychology. You know, I love psychology, I wanna learn it on my own. And then they enroll in a college and the university says, well, you should probably take it here. Like, cause you didn't learn intro here. How are you gonna do in those advanced courses? Right. So sometimes students doubt, you know, whether they really know enough, did this exam have the breadth and depth of a college course? And I can assure you it does. We work with an accrediting um, organization called ACE who ensures that the rigor of CLEP is similar to what's being taught across college university campuses. So I would say if you earn a passing score in CLEP and your institution awards college credit for it, you know, trust the process and right. um, go on to that next level course. Love it. And so what would you say, though, to like that high school student or that college student who does have a fear around even attempting to take the CLEP? Like what words of advice can you give that student right now? Right. Um, again, I feel like I'm just borrowing words from people, but we have some great club champions out there. And one of those was an advisor I had that from um, a university in South Florida who said, I tell my advisees, my students, that CLEP is low risk, high reward because the cost is reasonable. We know $93 is still a lot, you know, to right. come out of your pocket. But when compared to taking out a student loan for a college course, it's less. Mm -hmm. And he said the institution, if you send the score there and let's say you didn't get a passing score, you know, that college, they aren't going to ding you for it. You know, it's, it's not going to go on your transcript like a, you know, like a grade of a D would or an F would, you know, it's just you gave it a shot. If it didn't work, no one's really going to know about it. OK, so there is no negative grade attached to the transcript. Like if I take like a psychology CLEP test and I don't pass, there yeah. isn't like a big F on my transcript saying Raquel Bartoli <laughs> failed the CLEP exam. 
I, I'm sure, I'm sure you would never fail a club exam. But however, <laughs> what happens? Yes. Yeah, so I worked at university before I joined the college board. And so what happens is, um, as those club scores come in, um, club is scored on a scale to 20, 20 to 80 and 50 is recommended as a college credit granting score. So if a transcript came in and it was a 48, the college just doesn't transcript it. It just oh, kind of goes see. in this pile over here. So it's not going on the record as anything. Mm, well, that's something I learned. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and and Jeannie, what, who would you say is a good fit for the CLEP exam? Like, what does that student look like in the sense of like their their academic work, their mindset, their goals? Who would you say is a good fit for this test? Um, yeah, that, that's a really good question because I think we think of the typical go-getter students, you know, they're mm -hmm. taking lots of IP, they might be enrolled in early college, you know, and they're, they're coming to maybe a four-year university with almost an associate degree. So yeah, they make a good CLEP test taker. But I would also challenge those of the you out there who don't see yourself as a college student as to giving this a try. If you like to self-study, if you, we have 34 different subjects. So if you're interested in something that you think, you know, with a little reading, um, online learning, I could probably teach myself this because I'm interested in it anyways. Um, or our top volume exam is Spanish language. So we have a plethora of bilingual students who have grown up speaking Spanish. They speak Spanish in their homes who come and take the club Spanish language exam. And with that exam, they can earn six to 12 college credits for something they already know. Nice. It's kind of the epitome of the definition of credit by exam, you know, right. cr uh, credit for prior learning. So um, I would just challenge students who maybe don't see themselves as a college student, but just maybe for other reasons. But if you're looking at the ac academic part, prepare, practice, take an exam in a subject that interests you, I think is the other piece of that too. Right. And I heard you say prepare and, and, and practice and get ready. So what does that look like um, on the college board um, on that end? Like, do you provide resources so that students can prepare and study for the club? Yeah, a couple different things. Um, I would say there's we see kind of different best practice models happening. Um, so I mentioned advanced placement because AP is a, another college board program. Um, oftentimes we have students that didn't get that college credit score in AP. Okay. So with a little more review and practice, they can refresh that content and mm -hmm. take a second chance at college credit with CLEP. Again, some days it's just not your day to test, um, you know, and so to, to, to give yourself some grace, come back and prepare and practice. On our website, we have practice materials, um, links to textbooks that are commonly used. Again, these are mostly freshman level general education courses. Mm -hmm. So we have links to textbooks. We survey faculty to see what's being taught, um, you know, across the country, two year, four year, public, private. Um, so, so that's a plethora of resources out there too. We have some practice questions so students can become familiar with the rigor of CLEP. Um, there, we also have partnered with an app, Exam I Am. So if students want to um, take a practice test, that is a paid um, product, but you could um, take an exam and um, become familiar with like the content and what the rigor and the length, et cetera. Right, awesome. And so what, I know you kind of mentioned fear, but do you think there's anything else that we should address as far as what hinders students from from taking the test so that they can hear it and realize that it's it's something that I really need to push to the side, push through so that I can take advantage of this opportunity. Um, and, and fear would be some of it, but it's, it's almost like what day of the week do you want to go take a test? You know, taking mm -hmm. a test isn't something that you think, oh, I can't wait to get up and take a test. I would say most people, you know, so it's also just knowing that the reward is worth that effort, you know, that, right. that it does, this isn't automatic. This is three to six to 12 college credits. And also if you can um, give yourself a pep talk to do that, it has a great reward at the end. Yeah. And, and, and so what I like to tell students is like, we want to stack as many things as possible to pay for school. So you're going to fill out your FAFSA. You're going to keep applying for scholarships. And here we have the CLEP exam where this can help as well. Again, there is a fee 
But like you said, when you compare it to the full cost of being in a classroom for a whole semester, you're saving some time and you're saving some money. And so I, I wanna ask, because I know we do have some parents that are listening and educators, um, what can parents, educators, advisors, what can they do to, to promote the club? What can they do to prepare their scholars to like take and pass this exam? Yeah, I think one one piece, and this is why I appreciate your time today, is that there's a general lack of awareness around CLEP. CLEP has been around since 1967. So again, our, our original target audience were those adults returning to college after time in the workplace, military, and they needed a tool to show what they know. You know, I've, I have this level, college level knowledge, and I want to accelerate towards my degree. So there's a general lack of awareness, I think, especially in the high school space. Because we right. know in high schools, there's other ways to earn college credit, too. So so we, CLEP Program College Board, are just um, have been over the past several years seeing it more and more high school students and families trying to figure out mm. how to do this thing called college more affordably. And so CLEP can be part of the solution. Um, you know, whatever other ways you're earning college credit, I think um, CLEP should, should be at the table or be on the menu, perhaps, as one of another option for students. Right. Because it's all about stacking. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, I I'm a firm believer of not putting all my eggs in one basket because, mm -hmm. you know, you can be a student who fills out your FAFSA and 100 percent of everything is covered. God bless you. That's great. But if you're a student who fills it out and you realize there's still more that you have to pay again, we're trying to stack as many options as possible. So parents, um, educators, we we want to talk more about this. And I think starting as as early as possible, you know, even talking to middle schoolers, planting mm -hmm. the seeds of knowing, hey, there's a test that I can take based on uh, my knowledge, based on something I'm passionate about. And if I pass it, it's going to save me time and money. Um, and Jeannie, I know you've been with this amazing program for quite some time. Um, when you think about the students that you've impacted and you've worked with, do you have any specific like success stories that that stand out for you? Um, well, I'm fortunate that I work with, like I said, some great CLIP champions, whether they're high school teachers or um, at our test center folks who share their stories with me because I, I unfortunately it. don't get to interact with the students. And again, with the beauty of CLEP being digital, the student, the test taker takes the exam, they hit submit and they see their score right away. And the test center directors tell me it's so fun. You know, you get to high five the kiddo. They know that they, they just earn college credit um, for a 90 minute exam. Um, I think some of the stories that I really like, we have, um, I mentioned our Spanish language being a popular, our top volume exam. And we have many stories from schools, districts, even regions who are bringing um, those heritage Spanish bilingual students to the club Spanish language exam as a way to expose them to, you just earn six college credit for what you know. And sometimes yeah. um, it can shift that deficit thinking forward to like, does this mean I can go to college? That's my favorite is the mm -hmm. testing person said, you know, the student earned six college credits in Spanish. And she said, does this mean I can go to college? I love it. So um, I, I do too. Awesome. And so are there any any updates or any is there anything new coming down the pipe for CLEP programs or anything that you want to share that you're like excited about or can you not say anything because it's new? <laughs> well, one <laughs> thing I, know. <laughs> yeah, one thing that I didn't share. So when we talk about practice and preparation, so CLEP was always based on the premise, get credit for what you know, and then the college board has provided resources to those materials. Um, there's a uh, philanthropic group called Modern States. So Modern States came out in 2017. Um, they've created free online courses in all club subjects. So a little bit of a game changer. So now there's a way for students who maybe you're more of an auditory learner anyway, that okay. you'd rather listen to some lectures. So Modern States has created these lectures. They've embedded some clap practice, practice questions into their platform. So a learner can um, go on to Modern States. There's no age requirement, no number of exam, you know, of courses you can take the courses are free any materials are free um, for students who complete that modern states course and the um, embedded practice questions modern states will provide a voucher to cover your club exam fee so wow should have mentioned it earlier but as <laughs> i was talking okay. about we keep digging <laughs> here so as we talk about so if you haven't 
parents, families. Um, we have a story, that was a story I had out of Florida where the, the father was enrolled in a college university. He found modern states was taking the CLEP exam and then he had his two sons take the same one with them. Look so at they that. used the modern states to study together. They all got the voucher and they all passed. Look at that. <laughs> wow, that's a beautiful success story. I, mm -hmm. I hope you all were listening to Jeannie. Modern states free 99. All you have to do is go through the material, show that you're really grasping this and they will help you to cover. Now it's really like debt free stuff we're talking about here, but mm -hmm. you got to put in the work. You know, you can even form a study group. If you and a couple of your friends want to try to take the same exam, like get together, study and, and help prepare for this awesome opportunity. And so Jeannie, are there any tips or advice that you would like to offer to students who are considering the CLEP, like they've already thought about it before they even heard this podcast or they heard it and they're like, whoa, I, I think I wanna go for this. So do you have any advice or, or any tips for them? Well, what you just mentioned, that accountability piece, you know, is because we have this breadth of exams, 34 different subjects, um, even if you, do, you and your buddy don't take the same exam, I, I love this idea of find a partner who wants to do some self-study and challenge each other because there's something about accountability. Mm. Again, no one wants to go take a test on a Tuesday, but if you and your friend are going to do it together, you're going to study together, you're going to go to that test center together. Um, it's also important to... I should have mentioned it earlier, to look at your college or university of where you plan to attend. And we know not everyone knows where they're going to go um, to make sure that they accept the CLEP credit, what course it equals to and what score you need. Um, okay. So I would say to do that research piece, but on back to your question this time is really, I, I love the accountability. Find a friend and, and do it together. Right. I mean, Jeannie, I don't even like going to the gym by myself. So because <laughs> if I go to the gym by myself, literally, I don't push myself. I'm just doing the bare minimum. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I did 30 minutes. But if me and Jeannie are in there and Jeannie's like, listen, you got to, you know, you got to pull 50 pounds and 100 pounds and I'm going to do it. So, yeah, I think having a, a, a CLEP test buddy, a scholarship buddy, that accountability is there and you're not doing it on your own. And, and just kind of going back to what you said about checking in with the school. So, so if we have students here who are already like have their top f five schools in mind, um, it's best for them to just double check with that school and make sure that whatever CLEP exam they're about to pursue, that the school will accept that credit. Is that, is that correct? Yes, for sure. So um, just going to that college or university's website directly, you can just do a Google search CLEP and then hopefully you'll find a CLEP policy. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes you don't, so it might have to be a call to one of the advisors. Sometimes it can be a little bit buried in all that information that's on a college and university website. Awesome. And and Jeannie, if students want to or parents want to find out more about um, the CLEP, where should they go? Yeah, super easy. So College Board website, so College Board backslash CLEP, C-L-E-P. Love it. And so on there, we have resources. We have promotional materials. If you're an educator and want to share out more information about CLEP, you can order those. We'll ship them to your desk. The study materials, how to register for exam, um, how to understand your score. Awesome. Lots of good stuff. It is. Yeah. So educators and counselors and advisors, let's promote, promote, promote the CLEP more often to our students mm -hmm. so that they can see this opportunity. Students, get excited, get prepared, get your study buddy. And parents, let's start talking about this opportunity and planting the seed in our children's heads so that they understand what the CLEP is and how they can take advantage of it. So Jeannie, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you so, so much. And I'm so excited about all the students that are gonna come back and say, thank Jeannie so much because she helped me save money and save time. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Hey there, I hope you were taking notes and you're ready to implement what you heard. If this podcast inspired you or helped you in any way, I would love for you to subscribe, follow, and share this with a student, parent, or educator you care about because sharing is caring. Also, your feedback means a lot. So please leave a written review of this show on Apple Podcasts. And if you ever want to connect outside of the podcast, you can find us at the Scholar Budget on Insta or the Book of Faces. So until next time, shine bright and put in the work so we can make those dreams a reality. Bye.